Hi everybody, this is Delmar here. Welcome to Moan's Vlog video. I'm going to be a little bit honest with you guys. I'm a little bit nervous here. Uh, not so much about the reactions of people, but more or less I'm nervous of how I'm going to present myself. Uh, back in my 9 year anniversary vlog, I mentioned of how I wanted to make more videos talk about what God has done for me, about His love, His righteousness, about following Jesus. And it's one of the things that I want to talk more about on my channel because like it's kind of sad to where I want to say I'm a follower of Jesus but if you look at my YouTube channel and it's mostly like Thomas parodies, video games and such with a handful or like maybe five videos specifically talking about God. And sure I do say God bless you at the end of most of my videos over the last few years. But anyone can say that, and I think it takes a true follower of Jesus to not be afraid about speaking out to public. In fact, I am incredibly blessed to have many friends and family members and co-workers who I can talk to about God, about the scriptures at any time. But it's just one of those things where I'm nervous about speaking and if I'm going to say the right things or not. In fact, even when I have notes down for this, it gets kind of hard to do, but it's one of those things where I have to trust the Holy Spirit to help me to speak out. Much like how whenever uh, Paul was like uh, going to court, like to the Romans, that he allowed the Holy Spirit to speak through him. And that's one of the things that I need to trust more of. And I'm not trying to announce my belief in Jesus for the world to see. But it's because I want to talk about him because he's done so much. I want to be close with God. Not because I know I'll live or something like that, but because I want to know about his character, about who he is, his righteousness, about his love for everything that speaks justice and his distaste and everything that is unjust. Uh, to speak about what Christ has done for me, of how he died for the punishment that we all deserve. And it's one of the things I really want to make a video talk about what I've learned as I continue walking with God, as well as talk about other theological stuff along the way. But I'm not a preacher, I'm not uh, a student who knows about the doctrines of Christ and everything. I'm just like you. But it's one of the things I want to talk more about them and here we go, let's begin. I don't really have the best memory uh, out of everyone. I'm not saying I have short-term memory of anything, but sometimes I don't remember things quickly enough. But as I continue reading through the Bible and such, uh, like, I don't read it every day, unfortunately, but as I read it and try to take my time in understanding the scriptures and such, I've realized that certain verses has helped me over time. Like, I can remember several different verses that are very important to me that I can remember that help gives me encouragement along the way. But one of the things in regards to the scriptures that I have to remember a lot of is to keep the context in when the scriptures were written. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible that even though it was back then that we can heavily relate to nowadays. Uh, that many of the same stuff that we have going on in the world that is wrong and unjust was happening back then that was no different from this time period and such. And I think the problem with a lot of people is that they take a verse and put it out of context and for their own itching ears. In fact, some people may take a verse so literally like what I've had. And it's a interesting story that I want to tell uh, to you guys about. About half a year ago, I was praying before I was going to bed and sometimes my mind, like as I'm speaking out, will play like there'll be small voices going on trying to off throw me or something like that. And there was one voice that said, Don the Holy Spirit. And from the moment that I woke up from the sleep when I went to work, I was extremely nervous. I was scared. I was just a loose cannon. And I was worried that I caused the unforgivable sin about speaking bad against the Holy Spirit. Because it says in Matthew 12, 32, it says, Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, even in this age or the age to come. And I thought I caused the unforgettable sin. And I was nervous. But then literally when I came back from work and I was going online, one of the videos that showed up in my recommended feed when I opened up YouTube and it was a video by Alan Parr talking about the unforgivable sin. 
And when I watched that video, I felt comfort. I felt complete understanding and I felt peace about it. And even after praying, asking God to forgive me, I felt peace because I didn't understand the context of that verse. I mean, it sounds kind of weird a little bit because when you say like, speak bad against Jesus or something, you can be forgiven, but speaking bad against the Holy Spirit, that seems a bit confusing. But it's important to understand the context of Matthew chapter 12, where the Pharisees were seeing Jesus, who is the Son of God, and they know all this to be true, and they see him uh, healing this boy, but then announcing that Jesus can do this because he is possessed by demons. And that's something to think about. It's like with the Pharisees, they know who Jesus is. They are seeing this with their own eyes. And yet their hearts are so hardened that they just fail to believe it. I recommend going to Alan Paul's page to watch that video. I'll put the link in the description box below. It's a very good video. One of the first videos that led me to discover Alan Paul. But that's something that I've learned about the importance of keeping the context in the scriptures. And it also goes for another thing too with a hardened heart. It's like if you did something bad, like you stole from a friend or you bad mouthed someone, but you felt no remorse, you felt no guilt about it, you don't have the Holy Spirit inside you. Like if you really are a follower of Jesus and you have the Holy Spirit in you, it will let you know, hey, you've done something wrong. You have to ask God to forgive you and to repent of your sins. And speaking of the Holy Spirit, that's one thing I've noticed like as I continue reading the Bible, certain verses will stick out to me and I understand the context of it and the importance of that verse. Like one of my favorite verses is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22. I know that's a lot of twos in there. Where it mentions, but flee from youthful lust and pursue righteousness, love, peace, and joy with those that call to the Lord out of the pure heart. And that is to uh, run away from worldly lust, like earthly desires that are poisonous like cancer, and instead uh, seek faithfulness, uh, uh, seek the joy and love with those that call to the Lord. And that's something that's helped me in my own struggles, because I, I know there's many people out there that say that I'm a good person and such, but in reality, I'm a sinner, like we all fall short, like you sin, I sin, everyone sin. Even the greatest people of all time that we look up to uh, and admire, they also fall short of sin. Because like I have my own shortcomings too. Only one person has existed in this world that was perfect, never sinned, and yet we crucified him on the cross. But it's by grace through the faith of Jesus that we are born again, brand new. He died for what we deserved. Like, we should be the ones that should face the ultimate punishment. But it's because of what Jesus did, where he died on that cross, all of our sins have been wiped clean, wiped up from the record books, and God has no memory of it. When we confess our sins and we feel repentance, He will forgive us. And that's one other verse that I really love is at the end of Romans chapter 8 verse 38 is where nothing can separate us from God's love. Uh, and I'm not talking about like uh, once saved, always saved. But I mean, if you're truly a follower of Jesus and you're seeking God all the time, nothing can ever separate you from that. Even if you like accidentally failed again, like if somehow you said you weren't going to do heavy drinking, but somehow you did it accidentally without knowing it, and you feel remorse and pain and nervousness, as long as you feel like you want to repent of your sins and ask God to forgive you, He'll forgive you, and nothing can separate you from God. Even if you're like, haven't spoke to God for like a few years or something, and then you speak to Him now, He never left you. He was always by your side. He's right next to me by my side. He never loses his eye. He doesn't like yuck away for one second off you or something. In fact, walking with God continuously has also helped me shape my view of the world a lot. Where even though I don't really watch the news, I refuse to watch like NBC, CNN, C-SPAN or whatever news channel it is. I don't really watch them because they talk about politics and it gets really confusing to keep track of. But even without watching that, 
that I know that the world is broken, or as Phil Fisher once called it, a broken amusement park. And it is, like, there's constant bickering, sadness. Heck, even when I go to work, you hear all the time, like, people just constantly complaining uh, and talking about people behind their backs and everything like that. And it's just sad to see that even though there still is love out there, like, there's still many great charity groups and people helping others, that we're still living in a broken world that is far from uh, repair. There will be times we'll be hurt, whether physically or emotionally or mentally hurt, but that we're secure in God's arms to be safe from harm. Like this world can only do so much, but when we enter into heaven, into the new heaven, new earth, that we will be secure from harm because nothing can hurt us afterwards. And also too, it's kind of reminding me to focus more on God first and not just on pop culture. Like, yes, I do make a lot of videos on Thomas and Mario and all the other stuff, but I don't want that to be my main focus on life. And there's nothing wrong with like catching up like the latest news on Star Wars or Marvel or something, but you shouldn't yet that be your life or something like that. It's like, I have a lot of video games and I'm actually going through them seeing which games I will replay and some that I'll just probably sell or give to a good friend of mine as such. And even my game wish list, I had a lot of games listed and now I think I have like maybe 20 that I would want to collect or something. And there's nothing wrong with collecting. Heck, I've been collecting the Hot Wheels Mario Kart figurines and such. But it's one of the things is that we shouldn't view this world as our home. We're only temporarily visitors and that everything in this world will fade away. And even uh, when this whole world is gone, God's will shall last forever. And that is one of the things where I have to be careful not to get so consumed by pop culture that makes me lose track of God. Honestly, there's a lot of stuff I could talk about uh, revolving God, Jesus, Heaven, Holy Spirit, and so on, but I'm not an expert. I'm just a normal person that's one to boast about what God has done for me. Because I think if you're a true follower of Jesus, you should not be afraid to talk about it wherever. I don't want to force it down people's throats because that's the wrong way to do it, but to openly want to talk about about uh, sharing what I've learned continually walking with God. And I'm still learning as I'm going. I mean, I think that's the wonderful thing is that like you can read the Bible countless times and then you get a brand new perspective on a chapter or scripture and understanding it in a different point of view that helps change in a way. Not taking it out of context, honestly, but you can read it countless times and you see a verse that you didn't really see, but it's highlighted for you that speaks to you in a way. And I feel pretty good about this video actually, speaking about all the things God has done. I might make more videos like this, but I don't want to force myself to because I know when I did that, Bumpy Road to Heaven vlog I did years ago, I was kind of forcing myself and that's the reason why it yucks kind of forceful a little bit, yucking at the video. So it's one of the things where I want to talk more about God, but I don't want to force myself to make him. So in the comment section below, let me know if you guys have any wonderful stories of what God has done for you, what your journey with following Jesus has been like. Thank you guys for watching this, God bless you. And I will see you all in the next Mullins Vlog video. Bye-bye!